All right, guys, how's it going? So this is my long-term review on the ROG G16. Well, as long-term as it could possibly be since this laptop came out maybe about 45, 50 days ago since I got it. I first started off with the 4070 version, and now I got the 4090 version. And there's some interesting differences between the two of them, which I'm going to get into. But... First, let me just talk about what it's been like to use this laptop overall. So I'm not gonna go into detail about the build of the design because I already covered that in my first look. Everything that I said the first time still holds up today. This is by far the best built ROG laptop that they've ever made. It's definitely in the top five contenders of the best built laptops ever. This metal feels incredible. And with this vapor chamber, it does a much better job of maintaining the surface temperature. So you're feeling that colder metal more than you would have on the 4070 version. And I'm starting to realize that that actually has a big um, impact on how we perceive premium products to be. If it feels cold to the touch, we associate that with being more premium. If it's heavier, we also perceive that to be more premium as well too. But with a laptop, at least for a laptop like this, you don't want this to be too heavy. And that's one of the best things about this, how light this laptop is. If you get the 4080 or the 4090 version, it's a little bit heavier. Honestly, I think I would have had to have both of them side by side to really be able to see if I'll notice the weight difference. I'm not really noticing it. It's easy to hold with one hand in the corner. Um, really, really comfortable laptop to just put in a bag and carry around too. And because of how premium this build is too, like there's barely any flex. So I feel really confident putting this into a backpack and it's not gonna warp or change shape or anything like that. So really happy with that. And I wanna revisit the wobble because in my initial look, a lot of people were concerned about that. I mean, honestly, like it wobbles when you do something silly like this, but no one's actually doing this all day. But it's really not that bad. And from this from this perspective, as I type, I'm not seeing any wobble at all. So I don't think that's anything to worry about. There's just nothing to complain about in terms of the bill of design. So I'm just gonna move on from there. So next I wanna talk about is today's sponsor. This is the CookTech 20,000 milliamp battery. This is the CookTech 15. And if you haven't heard of this brand, they're a very experienced company that is closely connected to Xiaomi. And they're focused primarily on power banks and chargers. So this is their bread and butter. And I've been using this for about three weeks. So this brand's been established in 2016 and they merged with ZMI's core team, which was one of Xiaomi's ecosystem companies. So really good company. 70% of the company's resources is dedicated to R&D. So they shipped over 150 million power banks, 20 million chargers, and 70 million battery units annually. So what I have here is the CookTech 15. It's a 20,000 milliamp battery. If you're just using one port, you can charge up to 120 watts. So you could charge a MacBook Air from zero to 55% in like 30 minutes. And because this uses power delivery 3.0, you're getting the full wattage out of this charger. And when I was charging the G14 with this, I, I got from like zero to 50% and probably like, it, it probably in like 30, 40 minutes, I wasn't timing it exactly. And with my iPhone, I can charge from zero to 100% three times using fast charge. Yeah, if you guys are interested in this, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I'm not gonna be benefiting from you using these affiliate links. This is just, so the company knows that I sent you my way. So I don't know if that matters or not, but just letting you know that. But anyway, yep, check out this battery if you're interested. All right, back to the video. So next I wanna talk about the heat and the thermals. It is significantly improved over the 4070. When I had that 4070, not only was it much much louder when I was on turbo mode and in dedicated GPU mode, but the temps were really high. The GPU was getting to the 84s, 85s I saw in some instances. And I, I'm in South Florida. It's hotter and more humid here than it is in other places. And in this room, I got a whole bunch of lights and all my, and my laptop is on, this laptop is on. So I have a whole bunch of electronics that are just generating a lot of heat. So this room is warmer than what a typical room would be, but I was getting temperatures in the mid eighties on the GPU and that, and the GPU starts to thermal throttle around 86, 87 degrees. But sometimes what I've noticed with the GPU, if the GPU goes above like 86, 87 degrees, sometimes the laptops just shut off. I never had that happen with the G16 4070 model, but it was kind of getting up to that area where I was like, you know what? I, I do actually do want to monitor these temperatures. On the CPU side, it was getting up to the high 90s, etc. So with the 4090, first of all, you're losing a fan, but you're getting a vapor chamber. And that results in much 
better noise control. First thing I'm gonna talk about is the noise, cause wow, it is significantly quieter than the G16 that I had with the 4070. That vapor chamber is making a gigantic difference. So even on turbo mode, when I'm playing Cyberpunk, which is putting a lot of, when I'm putting a lot of stress on the CPU and the GPU, the GPU was in the mid 70s, which is what I typically see on high end laptops. It was only running at like around 100 watts most of the time. I'm rarely ever seeing this laptop hit that advertised 125 watt TGP, but that's fine for a laptop this thin and light. I wasn't expecting it to. On the CPU side, the temperatures were a lot better. They were still like in the 90s ish, but not bad. And that's what I'm. I, that's what I expect for the CPU and just about every laptop I. I, I talk about and the surface temperatures were actually much better controlled compared to the 4070 version. But I want to come back and talk about noise and heat overall. I'm happy that gaming laptops are gaining in popularity. And because of that, a lot of other YouTubers are starting to jump on the bandwagon of reviewing gaming laptops. And you can tell just by looking at a lot of those videos, they don't really have any experience in reviewing gaming laptops. So some of the things that they complain about, there's just nothing you could do. I don't want to call any channel out by name or anything like that, but it's a combination of reviewers who typically review like phones and stuff. And all of a sudden now they're reviewing gaming laptops or traditional laptop reviewers who don't really test gaming laptops or just brand new YouTubers in general who just, I hate to say it, just don't really understand gaming laptops the way us enthusiasts do. So when they start saying that this laptop gets really loud, yes, most gaming laptops get loud. This is pushing a lot of power. And because of that power, you need to combat that heat and fans do that. And they're also saying that the surface temperatures get way too hot to the touch. Thin laptops will do that. There's no way around it. If you want high performance, these chips require a lot of power and with power comes heat. That's what power is, it's essentially heat. And because of that heat, the laptop needs to get rid of it in some way. So you can't, you can't really have a situation where you're getting a thin and light laptop, high performance, quiet fans, and cool temperatures. That is just not possible. Physics just does not allow that. A, a, a lot of other reviewers just probably just don't understand that, or maybe they're content creators where performance is more bursty. It'll spike up the CPU and GPU here and there, depending on what you do. But when you're gaming, the CPU and GPU is constantly being stressed for the entire gaming session. So gaming laptops have a specific task in mind when it comes to cooling, which is different than how a MacBook would cool or how a Dell XPS would cool, etc. I think a lot of laptop reviewers need to kind of understand that before they just start putting reviews together. So that was a bit of a rant, but this is one of those situations where, where you just can't have your cake and eat it too. There will be trade-offs and that's what makes reviewing laptops in my opinion, the most fun tech to cover. Anyway, all right, rant over. Having said that though, considering how thin and light this laptop is and based off of the performance I'm getting, this laptop is doing an excellent job. So let me just tackle the trackpad and the keyboard like really quickly because I've already covered it so many times. It's just as good as I remembered. And now that I've been getting in some other laptops, like I got the Alienware M16 R2, and going from that keyboard to this is kind of a stark difference. The RGG16 is substantially better. And even with this MacBook, I much prefer the G16 over the MacBook. And the trackpad is great. It's glass, it glides well, it's, it's good. So anyway, all right, so now let's move on to the performance. And this is where things get a little bit interesting because now I'm comparing the G14, which I had a 4060 of, and then I had the G16, 4070 and now I have the G16 4090. I think I would have preferred a 4080. I think that would have been the sweet spot, but I am having some concerns with games, with more modern games requiring more VRAM. So that's one reason why I got the 4090 version. And But honestly, the main reason why is because the 4080 is impossible to find. It's, it's constantly sold out and I haven't been able to find one. But anyway, so let's look at some of the performance numbers I've been getting. So let's start off with TimeSpy and I wanna talk about the CPU first. So there's gonna be a lot of natural comparisons between this and the Blade 16, probably just because of their build quality, et cetera. But I mean, the Core Ultra 9 cannot even begin to compete with the 14900H. But I will say though that 
Unless you're doing something like video editing or where you're playing fast paced competitive shooters at low resolutions trying to maximize frames, I personally would still prefer the G16's Core Ultra 9 because of how efficient that chip is. So when you're just an idle, you can you could be anywhere between four and like six or seven watts. But with the 14900, HX that's in the Razer Blade 16 or in my Titan 18, you're pretty much sometimes you'll be at 15 watts when the, when you're not doing anything. But the moment you just start browsing the web or anything like that, the see the the wattage moves up to like 30 watts. So just based off of that, you're getting a more efficient chip here that'll last longer. But as you can see in Time Spy, you're getting a big hit to performance. There's no doubt about that. And then when you look at the GPU, this is a 125 watt rated GPU, but you're not really seeing that in most games. The 4090 in the G16 is still underperforming compared to the Blade 16 with the 4080. We'll see how much of a difference that actually makes in real games, but that's definitely something to take note of. And we already knew this. You're not getting the full performance out of this 4090 in this thin and light laptop, but you are getting a good chip. And like I said, that VRAM could be worth it to you. It's just a lot more money compared to the 4070 and even the 4080 version. So it's up to you of how much you're willing to stretch your budget for this. But anyway, so now let's look at the first real game that I tested, which would be Call of Duty 3. So I test this at extreme with no upscaling. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like that's maybe not the best way to use it. So from now on, I'm going to start testing it with FSR because at least with FSR, I can test it across NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, and even Intel GPUs if I end up do testing those. But anyway, but since I started off testing only without any type of upscaling, as you can see, compared to the other laptops I've tested, the 4090 is getting an average of 109 FPS compared to only 70 FPS with that 4070 so you're getting a gigantic improvement but then since i decided that okay going forward i'm going to start testing with fsr 1.0 i it went up to 178 fps with a low fifth of 143 and a low first of 128 um and this is extreme settings usually when i'm playing a competitive shooter like call of duty or overwatch etc i'm running the absolute lowest possible settings to make sure I maximize frames. So you can you can creep up to the 200 FPS region really easily if you lower some of those settings. So anyway, next game, Cyberpunk, and this is using their newest update. This is with their overdrive settings. So as you can see, if you're trying to max out the settings in Cyberpunk, you can't you can't use an RTX 4070. It, you just can't do it. It just it won't run even at 1440p unless you introduce frame generation. But um, the 4090 with frame generation, you're able to get 30 FPS. But then look at the Titan 18 with the same RTX 4090. When you're pushing 175 watts versus like 100 watts in actuality when you're gaming, you're losing 11 frames per second. And the difference between 30 FPS and 40 FPS is pretty substantial in terms of being able to visually pick them apart. When you go up to like 120 FPS versus 140 FPS, it's probably not noticeable. But at this, but but when you're only pushing 30 frames to begin with, going up to 40 frames makes a really big deal. That is a 28% difference in performance between the 24090. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. But also, they're completely different machines with completely different use cases, just because of their size. And at 1440p, I'm getting 37 FPS, still playable compared to the 4070 where it's not playable. And at 1080p, I'm getting 52 FPS. At 1080p, the CPU starts to work a little bit more magic, but because this is not a high performing CPU compared to the 4900HX, you do start to see some bottlenecks. I'll show a little bit more of that later on. So next, Guardians of the Galaxy. At 4K, I'm getting 72 FPS, which is in, which is more which is more than playable. And as you can see, even compared to the ROG G14 2023 with that 4080, I was only getting 66 FPS. So you're getting a decent improvement. But then compared to that 4070, you're getting 59 FPS. So I think this is a good example of how the different G16 configurations will perform, whether you have the 4070, 4080, or 4090. I don't expect the 4080 in the G16 to perform 
any better than the G14 in 2023 model with the 4080, which I had previously. So that's a good indication for that. And at 1440p, you're getting 99 FPS. And as you can see, it is substantially underperforming compared to some of the other 4080 laptops. One, because those are 175 watt parts. Well, this is 125, but realistically, you're only getting about 100 watts on the GPU. And on top of that, at 1440p, the CPU starts to show a little bit of its limitations compared to the full performing HX chips. And then at 1080p, you really start to see more of that bottleneck. These are still more than playable frame rates. And remember, I have, every game that I test, I test at the full max settings with RTX on and if I'm using RTX, I'm typically using DLSS. So if you mess around with settings, you're gonna get much higher scores, but still, everything is still very playable. Finally, let's look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. One reason why I'm still testing Shadow of the Tomb Raider is because I don't use DLSS or RTX or anything like that. It's just regular good old fashioned rasterized graphics with no type of AI upscaling, which not every game supports even to this day. If I was to keep this laptop for gaming, I would be really happy with it. The only problem is for me, like I guess, cause I make these YouTube videos and stuff, I require the best CPU performance I can possibly get my hands on because it really speeds up my workflow when I'm making these videos and stuff. But if you're a student or you're just gaming or you're just a regular person, then I think you could be really happy with this laptop in terms of the performance with the 4090. I mean, there is some argument to be made that you're throwing money away because you're paying $3,300, at least here in the US, for a laptop that can't get the full performance out of it. So maybe go with the 4080, which is $2,899 if you want that, but it's a lot more expensive. It's like, so to go from the 4070 to the 4080, it's like $800 and that's a tough pill to swallow. I completely get that. But that vapor chamber makes a really big difference in terms of both the thermals and the fan noise. It's, it's gigantic. The 4070 was really loud. I mean, Game, a gaming laptop loud. If, if, you, you've used, if you've used a gaming laptop, you would be used to the fan noise over the 4070, but it's much lower on this 4080 and 4090 laptop. So if you have the extra budget, I would go for it, but don't. I don't want you to get too much FOMO over it. $800 is a lot of money. And if that's not something you're able to do, then I think you'll still be really happy with the 4070 model. And I've spoken about battery before. Because of this Core Ultra 9, I'm getting like eight to nine hours of battery life. If I wanted to, I can probably squeeze even more out of it versus every HX chip, whether whether it's the 3980 HX or the 4900 HX. Realistically, you're never getting more than three, four hours on that once you start using the laptop normally. So there is definitely an argument to be made for going with the Core Ultra 9 versus going with another laptop like the Razer Blade, which would have a 4900 HX. It just depends on what you're gonna be using it for. And honestly guys, I don't really think I have anything else. This is a very easy laptop to review because of how good it is. And because I've been using it almost daily for 45 days, not only as just like a regular laptop to do regular laptop stuff, but also to game, I've been just really, really happy with it. I think next year when we can start to see the Core Ultra chip start to perform as well as the 4900 HX, then it's going to be a no-brainer. I think those HX chips, their days are numbered. It's kind of hard. It, like now that I'm using laptops like this, and even with the Ryzen chips, it, it seems really silly to be putting a 4900 HX on a laptop where it just destroys battery life the moment you unplug it. So if you guys are interested in buying the G16, I'm gonna have links down below. Yeah, so if you guys like this video, like it. If you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you around. Thanks, bye.